Are you struggling to understand your aircraft's electrical system? Stay tuned for the next installment of the VSL Aviation System Series, where we talk about all things electrical system. In this first video, we're gonna discuss the basics of electricity. So not just how it applies to aircraft, but electricity in general. It's really important that you have a fundamental understanding of this before we build on to the aviation specific uh, aspects of the electrical system. To start our discussion, we're gonna talk about two of the core components of any electrical system. Uh, the first would be a battery. And we're going to discuss the fundamentals of what this battery is and how it works. But first, I just want to introduce you to a basic aviation battery. So this is a Gill battery. It's a 12-volt battery. And like I did in the engine video, I just like showing how much does this thing weigh. Uh, so on the scale here, it comes in right at 22 pounds. So pretty hefty device here. A little bit bigger than uh, your, your phone's battery, probably. Uh, over here, this is a generator. Now, on modern aircraft, we don't tend to see generators anymore. We tend to see a lot of uh, alternators now uh, and in, in normal vehicles as well. But in earlier uh, aircraft, like the one in the background here, these had a lot of generators. So I'm going to show you how much this weighs. Right at 25 pounds. So just our two core pieces uh, of our electrical system in the aircraft could weigh up to 45, 50 pounds just in these two things alone, not including all the wiring and, and stuff that's gonna be required to make these two things work. Now, what I wanna do now is discuss how these things are actually working. To understand how your battery and generator interact with one another, I think it's important to take a few steps back and talk about fundamentals of electricity. So that's what we're gonna do now. A good way to understand the fundamentals of electricity is using water. So what I have here is kind of a jerry-rigged uh, teaching device that has water and this little water toy here. Now you can imagine the water comes down and makes these two wheels spin. So this is our uh, analogy of some sort of electrically powered device. And in this case, this is a water powered device. Now the flow of electricity and water are very similar at the kind of broad level of understanding. So although electricity does, you know, operate fundamentally different than, than water, it's a good way, you know, if you understand how the, the flow of water works, you're gonna have a good fundamental understanding of how electricity works. So I have a bucket of electricity here. Pick it up with my cup and pour it in. And you can see the water makes the wheel spin, just like we'd imagined. If I want to keep those spinning, I have to keep moving the water back and forth. And you can tell by the time I get my cup and get more electricity onto the water wheel, it's already stopped spinning. So this wouldn't be an ideal way of operating an electrically powered device of giving it surges of electricity. It's going to have time to spin down and stop. So not a very efficient way to move water or electricity in this case. So. The way we fix this is with a battery. All right, so now what I've introduced in the system is a battery. This bucket is a representation of our battery. A bucket is really good at holding water in this case, much like a battery is good at holding electricity. So the, the bucket here already has a little bit of water in it. And as I start to fill up my bucket of water, you're gonna see the water start to come out of the bottom and into our water wheel device. Now the nice thing about this is as I continue to fill it up with water, the water flow is going to be much more uniform. So as I keep pouring water into the bucket, doesn't matter how fast or slow I'm going really, as long as it's above the line of the bucket, it's going to flow and run my electrical device. So with the battery in the mix, I've got a lot more steady flow, which is a much better way to run our electrical systems. We don't have that surging that we were seeing when it was just the cup. But we still have the same fundamental problem, and that is if we don't refill our battery with electricity or our bucket with water, it will eventually start to spin down and, and not be able to provide the water flow that we need. So we'll bring the camera over here and show uh, what's happening, but this is a really good analogy too of a battery. 
a battery doesn't have to be completely empty for it to not be effective at what it's supposed to do. So in this case, we want our battery to make the water wheel spin. And as you can see right there, we start seeing it spin slower. Now there's still water in this bucket, but there's not enough to make the water wheel spin anymore. You'll run into this with aircraft batteries as well. They may not be completely dead, but they're so drained of their electricity that they're unable to do their core functions. If we bring the camera over here, you can see that our bucket clearly still has water in it. It's just not enough water to run our electrical system, in this case, our little water toy. An aircraft battery or any other type of battery for that matter has the same function. The battery actually still has a slight amount of electricity still in it or charge, but not enough to do its core function. So that's what we've seen here is our, our bucket of water isn't empty, but there's not enough to run the electrical system. So that brings us to our next core problem that we have with the electrical system is how do we keep this bucket full? That's what our generator's for. So let's take a look. So the problem that we have to solve is we have our battery that's continually being drained by running our electrical system. We want to keep our battery full. And in this case, we want to keep our bucket full of water. The, we can do this through a closed loop system using a water pump here. Now this water pump is a stand-in for our generator. The way this works is there's a small electric uh, motor in this water pump. And when we turn it on, it's gonna pump water up to a, the, the top bucket or a battery. So what you'll see is as this runs, it will pump water up into our battery, kind of recharging uh, our bucket here, and we'll get movement on our electrical system. So we can see our electrical system's working nicely here. And all the water that goes into this bucket gets recirculated back into the top bucket or a battery. So this small water pump is a great stand-in for our generator. Our generator takes excess horsepower from the engine, spins some metal and magnets around that creates an electrical field and in turn recharges our battery. Uh, this water pump's doing the same thing by using a small electric motor in the top here to move water from the bottom bucket back up to the top bucket, essentially creating a closed loop system. So as long as our engine is still operating, our battery is going to be charged and our electrical system will operate normally. Now, if we take the battery out of the equation, our generator might be capable of running our entire electrical system by itself. But just like in the first video, and I'll demonstrate it again, if our generator is operating the electrical system by itself, it's kind of like us taking this coffee mug and refilling, because as we make power changes, the generator is gonna spin at different speeds, which is gonna cause our electrical feed to our system to fluctuate. So we really want this battery buffer in there. Uh, and that's really what the battery is doing, is it's act acting like a buffer in between whatever we're using to generate electricity, whether it be an alternator or a generator, and the rest of our electrical system. Now on certain aircraft, we might have what's called a dual fed system where the generator and the battery are supplying power simultaneously. We'll talk about this in future episodes. For now, we're just gonna keep to the basics here. Now the next thing we need to talk about, now that we have the fundamentals of how a battery is being recharged by an alternator or generator, is you'll notice as soon as we put water into our bucket, it immediately flows out into our little toy down here. Now this isn't an ideal situation, right? We want to be able to essentially turn the flow of this water off. So we do that with a valve, which is a very good analogy for a switch, an electrical system. Let's take a look at how that works. All right, so now we have our battery and I've actually filled this bucket up entirely with water, or about halfway with water only I've installed a valve down here. Now this valve is in the off position right now, so there's no water flowing from our bucket. This would be similar when you go out to your aircraft, you have the battery switch in the off position. Now, turning the battery on and off isn't really a thing, just like having a bucket of water uh, on and off isn't a thing. It's either has water in it or it doesn't have any water in it. I can't turn the water off, but what I can do is I can stop the flow of water with a valve. And that's the exact same thing that's happening in your aircraft with the battery switch. Now when I open this valve, 
it's very similar to when I turn the battery switch on in my aircraft. I'm allowing electricity to flow out of my battery into the electrical system and power something. Now I've taken our little water toy away, but you can imagine it sitting there spinning. It was kind of making a mess, so it was time for it to leave. But the flow of electricity you can see just like the flow of water out of our battery. And when I want to stop the flow, I simply turn the switch off. Now you can see just like in uh, an aircraft or your car, maybe this has happened to you before, you leave an item on in your car like a dome light or the lights or the emergency flashers. You've essentially left the battery slightly open and that water, kind of that electricity, or in this case water, is just trickling out of your battery slowly. And since there's nothing to refill our bucket, eventually this bucket is going to run dry. So that's basically our analogy between a switch and a valve. They're working very, very similar. Now, as you can see, so far we've only had one source of water out of our bucket. If you can imagine this being an electrical system, it wouldn't be a very functional one. We could only run one thing. We want to run multiple things on our aircraft. So that's where we get into uh, an item called a bus. You might have heard of a battery bus. So in order to talk about a battery bus, we're going to add some more stuff to our battery here and show you how that works. So what I have set up here is a basic analogy of a battery bus. And this starts looking more like a, an electrical system in an airplane where we have our battery connected to a bus, which in this case is uh, some tubing with a couple of valves on it. Now I can come in the plane, I can turn my battery switch on, or I'll turn this valve on. So now I've allowed water to flow from my battery into the battery bus. Now each of these valves represents a different, different component of our electrical system. One might be the radio and the other might be the starter. So if I turn both on at the same time, watch what happens to the water flow. So you can see the flow there is what it is, but as I turn one off, I get more flow on the other side. Now again, this is another good example of how your electrical system works, and that's why when we get in the airplane, we want all of our electrical systems to be turned off. That way when we turn the battery on, we're not draining it. And then when we go to use the starter, we have all the flow from our electrical system, or our water system, going to our starter, rather than being split to different components. So the next time you're in your airplane thinking about operating multiple electrical systems at the same time, imagine that you're draining water from your battery that much faster. So this is another good way to understand how an electrical system failure could affect you in flight. If we're flying along and our alternator is working, in other words, this bucket of water is continually refilled with water, so we're not worried about our battery draining and our electrical system failing, we can turn all of our equipment on. So we can turn all of these valves on and everything's working just fine. But when we have an electrical failure, we wanna to start to load shed. And that means turning off our electrical equipment a piece at a time. Ideally, we'd wanna turn it off where we're not using any electrical equipment and that would preserve the electrical power that we have in our battery. If we're not able to do that, our battery is eventually gonna drain and most aircraft batteries last around 30 minutes with a light electrical load. However, if you don't turn off switches or turn these valves off, your bucket of water or your battery of electricity is gonna drain quicker and you're not gonna have that 30 minutes. You may only have 10 minutes. So that pretty much sums up how electricity works. And remember, this is electricity in general. It's not just how an aircraft electrical system works. You have a battery uh, which acts a lot like a bucket of water. It's a way to store electricity that we can use to run different things. A generator or an alternator is like this water pump. It pumps water into our battery or into our bucket and keeps it full. So as long as our generator or alternator is, is operating correctly, it's supplying our battery with an electrical charge and keeping it completely full so our battery can help us run our whole electrical system. If our generator or our alternator stops working, 
our battery is not going to get recharged and all the electricity in that battery is going to drain out unless we do a load shedding by turning off different components of our battery bus or any type of electrical system that we have going. We also talked about how the valves operate a lot like electrical switches. When we turn a valve on, it allows water to flow, much like a switch is in the on position allows electricity to flow. Also, the more valves that we have open, the more draw of water that we have. So when we're trying to run something that has a high demand, such as a starter, it helps to turn all the other switches off and allow our electrical system to focus its energy just on operating one component. This is also holds true when we're trying to load shed during some sort of electrical malfunction. Hopefully after watching this video, you have a good fundamental understanding of how electricity works. In subsequent videos, we're gonna do deep dives into each component of an aviation electrical system. So we're gonna see a lot more uh, generators, batteries, alternators. I'd love to hear what you thought about this in the comments and maybe some specific things about the electrical system that you would like us to cover over the next few weeks. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.